Hi, I'm Linwood Fields, your green instructor. <clears throat> Welcome to lecture four of dimensional analysis. In this lecture, we're going to solve more problems using dimensional analysis. The objectives become proficient or skilled, skillful using dimensional analysis to solve problems. <clears throat> know that dimensional analysis can be used to solve rate problems. And know that dimensional analysis is a great tool to use to solve problems requiring multiple unit conversions. Here's our two-step dimensional analysis recipe. This is a review. Remember, in step one, if we don't have a conversion factor, we make one. Then we take care of units. In step two, we take care of the number part. Okay, let's work an example. Let's assume that your family is planning to take a trip to a wind farm to see how massive and awesome wind turbines are. You would like to learn more about this pollution-free, clean energy wind turbine technology. The wind farm is 100 miles from your house and your father would drive an average speed of 50 miles per hour. Your brother and mother want you to determine how long it will take to get there because they know that you are the family's math expert. So remember in step one, we have to form conversion factors and then take care of the units. That is, we form a conversion factor if we are not given one. So we are given that the wind farm is 100 miles away. What ratio do we use? Oh, remember, we said the word per means to divide. Per is a clue that 50 miles per hour is a conversion ratio or conversion factor. So in this problem, you are indeed given a conversion factor. The two choices are 50 miles in the numerator and one hour in the denominator, or one hour in the numerator and 50 miles in the denominator. So which one do we choose? Let's select the first one, 50 miles in, in the numerator. And then remember, we, we multiply the conversion factor by what we are given. We are given 100 miles. Okay, so up here, I simply copied down what we ended up with in the last slide. But looking at this right here, we immediately realized that we chose the wrong conversion factor because there is nothing to cancel or divide out. If we were to write 100 miles as a fraction with a denominator of one, we would realize that we had two fractions and both fractions have miles in the numerator. This is wrong because we need a one of the fractions to have miles in the, in the denominator so that we can use same object division. Therefore, we select the second conversion factor and multiply. So this is the wrong conversion factor. The one that we want is one hour in the numerator and 50 miles in the denominator. And then we multiply that, that conversion factor by what we are given. We're given 100 miles. And remember, we're trying to find the amount of time that it takes you to drive 
to the wind farm, which is 100 miles away, and you are traveling at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. Okay, here, we're still in step one. We're taking care of units. And after writing 100 miles as a fraction with a denominator of one, we can use the same object division rule to cancel out miles. We are left with hour, so miles and miles go away up here. The only unit you're left with in this one line uh, solution, the only unit you're left with is hour, which is what we uh, want. We are left with hour, which is what we want for the units. And at this point, the solution looks like the following. The question mark here reflects the fact that we have not determined the number part of the answer. So what we're going to do on the next slide, we're going to complete the solution by finding the number part of the answer. <clears throat> so remember step two, we take care of the number part. This is just a repeat of what we ended up with on the last slide. We forget about the units and just write the fractions with the numbers only. So this fraction becomes 1 divided by 50, and then that's going to be multiplied by this fraction, which is 100 divided by 1. Remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators 1 times 100, and then we multiply the denominators 50 times 1. 1 times 100 is 100. 50 times 1 is 50. 100 divided by 50 is equal to 2. So we don't leave our fraction, we don't leave our answers as fractions. Our complete solution looks like this right here. Notice that it is a one line solution. Now, this makes sense because if I travel 50 miles in one hour, then certainly I would travel twice as far in twice the time. So I would travel 50 times 2, which is 100. Every hour I travel 50 miles. And if I travel two hours, then I must travel 50 plus 50 or 50 times 2, which is 100 miles. Always ask yourself, does this answer make sense? Example two. Now, this is the same problem as before with a slight twist to demonstrate the power of dimensional analysis. This time, your family is planning to take a trip to a solar farm. Now, this is not the same one that you uh, uh, visited the last time so that you can learn more about this awesome pollution-free clean energy wind turbine technology. Your mother estimates that it will take about four hours to get to the solar farm when traveling your favorite, favorite scenic route. Your average speed will only be about 35 miles per hour because this is a scenic route and you can't go as fast. So that's okay because you're, you're going to enjoy the beautiful scenery on the trip. Your father wants you to determine about how far away the solar farm is because you are the family's math expert. Okay, remember in step one, we have to uh, form conversion factors if we are not given one and take care of the units. Now we are given that the estimated time is four hours. What ratio do we use? Oh, remember, we said that the word per means to divide. Per is a clue that 35 miles per hour is our conversion ratio. 
Here are the two choices. 35 miles in the numerator and one hour in the denominator and one hour in the numerator and 35 miles in the denominator. Now let's select the first one. If we select the first one with 35 miles in the numerator and multiply this conversion factor by what we are given, which is four hours, then we can see that that is the correct conversion factor because when I write four hours as a fraction with a, with a denominator of one, we can immediately see that hours will cancel out using same object division. Okay, so this right here is just copying down where we left off on the last slide. And again, we immediately realize that we chose the correct conversion factor because hours and hour cancel out. The S here on the end of hour is insignificant. So this hours and hour are still the same unit. So here we just rewrite this so that we have four hours as a fraction with a denominator of one. Okay, and, and forming the, remember we're still in step one where we're taking care of units. We are left with miles. And at this point, our solution looks like this right here. Hours have canceled out using same object division. The units that we're left with, the only units we're left with up here is miles. That's why we have miles over here. The question mark reflects the fact that we have not completed the number part of the solution. Now we're going to do that in the next slide. So we take care of the number part. We forget about the units and just write the fractions with the numbers only. So this fraction is written as 35 divided by one. And this fraction is written as four divided by one. Remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators 35 times four, and then we multiply the denominators one times one. 35 times four is 140. One times one is one. Of course, we never like to leave an answer with as a fraction with a denominator of one. Anything divided by one is equal to that anything. Here is the complete solution. Again, it is quite beautiful. It is a one line solution. This makes sense because if I travel 35 miles in one hour, then I will certainly travel four times that far if, I'm, if I have four times the amount of time. So if I can travel 35 miles in one hour, well, in four hours, I can travel four times that amount. Four times 35 is 140. Again, always ask yourself, does my answer make sense? Dimensional analysis is so beautiful. Examples one and two are actually rate problems. You get into rate problems in physics. Now, Rate problems can be solved with the famous equation, distance is equal to rate times time. Distance traveled is equal to my speed multiplied by the amount of time that I'm moving. Or D for distance is equal to R for rate times T for time. In example one, we were given distance. Remember, the distance from our house to the solar farm was 100 miles. And the speed that we were traveling at was 50 miles per hour. And the problem asked to determine the amount of time that it would take to get to the solar farm. Well, certainly this is a rate problem because we're trying to determine 
time, and we know distance, and we know rate or speed. Now, with algebra, we can simply rewrite this equation here. We can solve this equation for time. So if I divide the left side and the right side by rate, rates cancel out on the right side. And on the left side, I'm left with distance divided by r, which is rate. So the time that it takes is equal to the distance divided by the speed or rate. The distance was 100 miles. The speed was 50 miles per hour. 100 divided by 50 is equal to 2. We get the same result of two hours that we got using dimensional analysis. Yes, dimensional analysis can be used to solve rate problems without any algebra. Yes. So if you were taking a test, say you were taking a physics test and you forgot to put the rate formula on your uh, steady sheet and, 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 and that particular day you were taking the test, you were having a particularly bad day and you couldn't remember the famous, famous rate equation up here. Well, it's no need to panic because you know how to use dimensional analysis to solve the problem. Now on your solution, make sure that you, uh, perform it as we have been doing so that your uh, professor or your teacher will understand what you have done to get your solution. Units are very important. Notice that all of our answers have two parts. They have a number part and a units part. Leaving out either one of them and your answer is simply wrong. Do not forget the units. Do not forget the units. The units part of your answer are just as important as the number part. Imagine the following. You have been tasked to go to Neptune to make a critical surface measurement. Remember, Neptune is one of those planets very far away. Your team successfully designs a space vehicle and you land on Neptune's surface. You make the measurement and make a successful journey back to planet Earth. Everyone is eager to hear the results. The whole world is watching the six o'clock news. Yes, there are 35 million people waiting on your answer. You state that your Neptune surface measurement is 37 and immediately have to go to another event. The viewers are left with open mouths and want to know the rest of the answer. You forgot to tell them the units. 37 what? 37 fish? 37 cows? Well, 37 meters? 37 degrees Celsius? 37 what? The world will have to wait for your return to the newsroom. The lesson learned here is that a measurement is no good if we do not know the units. And as a matter of fact, the measurement is incomplete without the units. Let's look at multi-conversion dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is often used to solve problems requiring multiple unit conversions. The problems or the examples we've been working are quite simple in that we only needed to perform or use one conversion factor. With those problems, we ended up with a nice one line solution. And as we're going to see here, we'll still end up with a, with a nice one-line solution when I have to use multiple conversion factors. Okay, here's the problem statement. Compute the number of minutes in two days. I'll go ahead and give you the answer 2,880 minutes are in two days. 
However, I'm going to work it out for you using dimensional analysis. Okay, so let's write down what we're given. We're given two days. Now let's go ahead and write two days as a fraction with a denominator of one. Now in the previous examples, we wrote our conversion factor down and then we multiplied it by what we were given. But we can just as well write down what we are given first and write it down as a fraction. The reason we can do that is because of the commutative property of multiplication, which says that the order in which I multiply numbers does not matter. Okay, so I got two days. We're trying to find the number of minutes in two days. Now, if I just happen to know off the top of my head, the number of minutes in one day, then this would simply become a one conversion factor problem. But I don't know the number of minutes in one day. Okay, so how am I going to get to where I'm trying to go, which is I'm trying to find out how many minutes there are. So my final answer is going to be minutes. Okay, well, I know about days, and I, I need to I'm, I'm, I need to try to cancel out this days right here. Well, I know that there are 24 hours in one day, and I know how much how many minutes there are in one hour. So I, I think I'm on the right track. So the conversion factor 24 hours in one day would cancel out this day here. So 24 hours, which I'm abbreviating as HR, in one day. Or if you don't like day by itself, if you, if you want a coefficient out here, we're going to put a one here. Remember, whenever you see something written down and there's nothing in front of it, it's implied that there's a one in front of it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and use same object division rule and cancel out days. Now the units that I'm left with is hour. Okay, again, I know the number of minutes in one hour. I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, so using same object division, hours cancel out. And wow, guess what? The only unit left up here is minutes. That's what we want, minutes, because we're trying to convert two days into minutes. Now, let's forget about the number part of the answer and let's forget about the units part of the answer and go to step two which is finding the number part so this fraction here we're going to write it down without the uh, units that's simply two divided by one and this fraction here is 24 divided by one and this fraction is 60 divided by one. And remember when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators, two times 24 times 60. And then we multiply the denominators, one times one times one and two times 24 times 60 is equal to 2,800 
and 80. And let's bring our minutes. So this is so this goes up here. So 2880. Okay, I've used a slightly different uh, tone of blue. Okay, so here's the complete one line solution. 2880 minutes in two days. This is a one line solution. This is beautiful. So we've used dimensional analysis twice because we had two conversion factors. Now in fifth grade, they use proportions to solve unit conversion problems. Now that would be a little bit awkward on this problem here. This is much easier, much simpler, and less susceptible to errors. Summary, dimensional analysis is a two-step process. The first step is you take care of the units, and then in step, in step two, you take care of the number part. Now in step one, if you don't have a conversion factor, you make one. Dimensional analysis can be used to solve rate problems. No algebra is needed. And last of all, dimensional analysis is much quicker than using proportions to solve problems requiring multiple unit conversions. Here are some practice problems. Please uh, perform them so you can get so you can develop your dimensional analysis skills. Thank you for your time. That is the last lecture in dimensional analysis. Please feel free to contact me if you need any clarification. Thanks. Goodbye.